All right, well, welcome back from the break and welcome to Solid Edge University uh, 2014. Uh, very excited to have that uh, Razor presentation uh, right before me. Hard act to follow, great stuff and a lot of lessons to learn there. Um, but I'd like to welcome you all personally. Uh, I look out there, I see uh, people I know, customers I've worked with for 10, 15 years or more, uh, many of whom I consider friends, uh, as well as some new faces in the audience. So it's really great to have all of you here. I'd like to kind of dive into Solid Edge ST7. Turns out to be the 27th release of Solid Edge. And I think we can sum up ST7 in a single word, actually. And that word is you. So when we build Solid Edge, when my team builds Solid Edge, we're not really into the latest CAD fashion, trend of the day. We're all about productivity at your desktop 24-7. And we're trying to bring the product, you, you're trying to bring those products to market, and we're trying to help you design better every day. And in fact, in ST7, we've implemented over 1,300 customer requests, requests from you, our customers, now in ST7. And we'll get into those in quite a bit of detail here in just a second. Now, I can kind of summarize these at a high level, uh, kind of four different categories. The first is accelerating your 3D modeling. So we want you to be able to take your designs to that next level with faster, more flexible 3D modeling. We have some really awesome new photorealistic rendering that we're going to share with you in our presentation today. Secondly, we want to allow you to streamline your design management. We want you to be able to complete your projects faster with design management that's both visual and very straightforward. We also want you to be able to power up with new apps, whether that's a design app or a manufacturing app or a collaboration app. All of the stuff that's built around Solid Edge to help you be more productive. And then finally, enjoy an amazing user experience. We've tried to wrap all this in a very modern, fresh Solid Edge that I think will really appeal to you. It's all about unleashing your creative potential with our most intuitive user interface yet. So look for these kind of four points as we talk today. Accelerate your 3D modeling, streamline your design management, power up with new apps, and enjoy an amazing user experience. Now I want to start today kind of from the bottom up. And we want to start with that amazing user experience. The team has really spent a lot of time looking at Solid Edge and saying, just how can it be better in its core? We've worked a lot of things from top to bottom and said, let's redo this. We can make this better. We want to provide that amazing user experience. And what you're going to see first is, you know, how do you approach Solid Edge now? What do you see first? How is it a little different? And so we'll start with that with the user interface. Guys? Yeah, absolutely. So you start up Solid Edge ST7. This is the first thing you'll be faced with a brand new, fresh startup screen. So let's go through a few of these things. Let's point some, some stuff out. So on the right-hand side, you'll see it's all about learning Solid Edge, getting on board, board with Solid Edge. If we take a look at that top one, choosing a learning path, so different methods in our learning portal of how you can get on board with, with using the software day to day. So for example, what do you do? Or who are you? Or what do you want to know? Different, different routes you can flow through. If we took a look, take a look at uh, what do you want to do, this is a nice visual approach to the type of projects that you're going to be doing in Solid Edge. Maybe that's what my product looks like. That's a component of one of my products. So you can visually link to one of these tutorials in that way. Or what do you want to know? This is a much more structured approach. So nice PDFs, full courses on all of the different areas of the software, together with the models that come with the software so you can get on board with those tutorials nice and easy. Other things on the startup screen, if we go down to the bottom, we've got a link to our social media, in this case, Facebook. So all the latest news and gossip, of course, Solid Edge University in this case. And if we do look down the bottom left, customers talking about the Refresh community site. Remember, we released that in ST6. That's our great fountain of knowledge, so there's a, a link there for you. And also that more official technical support route, GTAC, that's all linked there from the startup screen too. Something also brand new in ST7 is much more of an organized way of adjusting your template. So if you want to switch out between different standards, you can do that just a single click of a button, and that'll update on your startup screen. And you'll also notice a nice list of recent documents and a nice thumbnail as you hover over those. So all these, uh, this design work we'll be doing as we take a look at ST7, you'll see all of those products come up on screen later on. 
the open, open window. Yeah, is that new? Absolutely. Completely overhauled for ST7. So if you're used to Microsoft Windows 7 and Windows 8 shortcuts down the left-hand side, you want to do things like copy and paste with inside the window, you might find that was a bit of a, a, bit of a struggle before. Not now. It's completely uh, in line with all of the other Microsoft products that you, you're used to. All right. Back to you, Dan. Oh, actually, there's probably one more thing we could have a look at. Yeah, if we go into the ISO part in this case, so as you start designing, get into the interface, you'll notice this is a great addition to user interface. So these extended tooltips with videos so you can see how you can use commands. That's actually a new command. We'll take a look at that later on. That's great for, for existing users. What about new users? Taking a look at existing commands, something like the smart, smart dimension. Again, extended tooltip so you can clearly see how you can get, get on board with Solid Edge straight away. Super, thanks so much. So just to recap a few things you saw there, and I will say that you're going to see throughout the demonstration today, you'll see little things happening that are new and different. There's just a lot of rework in how you interact with Solid Edge to make it more productive for you. But a few things we saw there, the new startup screen, access to a lot of different uh, ways to get involved in the community. The Facebook page actually is quite vibrant. There's a lot going on there. I've been really impressed with the amount of content there, so I invite you to visit that often. The enhanced tooltips with not just text but video, we're finding that's a great way for folks to learn things. And we've really, over the past several releases, been working on, I don't know if we could even really call it the help system, this, this way in which you learn Solid Edge or new users learn Solid Edge more deeply. I think it's a completely different, much more professional approach to that education. And then finally saw the expanded file open dialog, which of course is a great way to, um, you know, to be uh, work in a more Microsoft friendly way. And there's a lot of capability in there that you'll be able to take advantage of. Now one of the things that was a little surprising to me, the enhanced tooltips, when we really designed those, we designed those for people coming to Solid Edge from scratch, brand new, and we were expecting you know, small customers coming over from other systems or whatever. But folks like Eagle Bergman who have 50 seats, 100 seats of solid edge. Big customers, like many in this audience, are often bringing on new engineers. Very excited about the ability to be able to absorb that information very quickly as you bring on those new engineers. So now we've seen a little bit of the user interface, and we're going to see a lot more of that. But let's kind of get into the core of 3D modeling. And we're going to start with how you start a project. Well, everything's made of stuff. So what have we done with Material Table? It's actually been completely revamped from top to bottom, and you'll get to see that right now. All right, so let's jump into ST7. Let's do some modeling. So this helicopter is actually from one of our Australian customers out in Queensland. Uh, we're going to create a new little component in context, so do some top-down modeling for this little skid mount down here. And of course, as Dan said, our products have to be made of something, so we do need to choose a material. So we'll take a look at this new material interface within ST7. So you get used to the drop-down list for all your favorite materials, but this is what's new in ST7. Brand new interface, so you can clearly choose and select the type of material you want. On the left-hand side, you can see now it's all nicely segregated into their different types of material folders, so metals, all different steels and aluminium alloys, down to non-metals, polymers, woods, whatever. You can add your own materials into here. You can edit the materials in here. You can copy and paste and make slight tweaks if you've got different grades that you use. So once you're going to have a look at the details on the right-hand side, that's all your physical properties very clearly shown. Along with that sphere, so you can clearly see what the appearance is of that material. So it's all, all linked together, all comes together in ST7. On the right-hand side, that favorite and recent materials tab, so that's just your common materials that you use inside the company. You can set that up, and that's actually what becomes that drop-down list that you saw initially. So we'll choose the material, and we'll set this up, and we'll come back to this in a second. Back to you, Dan. All right, super. So what you see with the material table is really, if, you're, if you've worked with it in ST6 or before, it's a completely different, very intuitive visual interface. Not only that, it's very standards-based. So if you're trying to work with a material standard, it's going to be much more approachable that way. They can also be grouped so different people can use different materials. And then finally, very powerful ability to import materials from other sources, such as MatWeb. Again, we've been working with various beta customers on this. In this case, we have this listed as a major consumer products company. So if you ever have used soap or have washed your clothes, you have interacted with their products, and, uh, or diapers, all these things, uh, machines designed in Solid Edge. 
So um, they have this situation where they build large scale machinery, like a, a diaper making machine is about the size of a house, right? So large scale machinery and certain materials they use in that, other materials in the tooling, and they're really excited about the ability to segregate those and use different materials for different functions. Oh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take that, tight, the gratuitous <laughs> applause. I will pay you later, thank you. <laughs> um, all right, next up is quick shapes. This is really great, this is one of those things that it's kind of, a, I call these sleeper features where they're just, they're simple things but they just improve your productivity so much when you start a design or in the middle of a design. So let's take a look at what we're talking about with quick shapes. And we are allowed whoops, aren't we? I mean, this is what you guys do in the States. We're usually used to presenting in the UK and everyone's just, it's like a sea of silence. So we're, we're allowed the whoops, aren't we? Yes, allowed yes, the whoops so you're gonna, the whoops, yeah. whoops, is that a British <laughs> Okay, so let's jump back in and we'll continue designing this little skid mount bracket. So we've put down the origin, just getting that right in the center there. And to start off this design, Solid Edge is helping us out, uh, allowing us to place this in a specified project so we can clearly organize this. It's also going to automatically give us our part number for us, our starting revision at A. So that's all automated, ready to set us up to begin making some geometry. All right, so let's take a look at these quick shapes. And the first one we'll take a look at is the box. You saw that on that extended tool tip when we started to introduce the new user interface. So we'll sketch something out to start off with. So this is how the box command uh, starts. You, you start with a sketch. So we'll snap this down, relate to the, the components in the background. But don't blink or you'll miss the creation of the actual box because there's no in-between step after you've created this sketch. So we'll relate onto that back component and then instantly there's your 3D model. So you've got your first shape to start off to then go forward and, and create what you need to. We don't just want a cube here, so we're going to do some geometric changes. Of course, synchronous technology is going to help us here. So we can use a steering wheel just to edit that top face for our first change. Maybe we could use the 3D face relationships. We could snap that side face onto the, the frame. Ultimately, that's going to be welded, so we'll get that butt up against each other. We can maybe take that little top bracket as well. We could just uh, take the sketch location off the top of it. And then we can put a little cut in on the top. So what started out as a very simple shape, you can do very quick edits using synchronous technology to get more of a complex shape. And it'll be cool to see exactly where we're going with this later on. Another quick shape is the cylinder. So if we remove some weight out the side of this, we'll use the cylinder quick shape. Same workflow, so sketch it down. Notice the on-screen uh, dimensional input. This is also new in ST7. You'll see this used a lot. But then immediately, just straight out into creating a, a solid or cutting away from the solid. There's no in-between step there. Really quick to create these primitive shapes. Another synchronous addition. Let's put some 3D dimensions in. We'll put those in at PMI at the model level. So we don't have to worry about that underlying sketch. Of course, you're used to that with direct modeling. And one last quick shape we'll take a look at is the sphere. We don't need to put a sphere in here, but I'll just show you this. So again, very quick to create. I mean, something like this shape would take a lot of mouse clicks. Here we can add material, uh, take away material just as a, a toggle on a, uh, on a key, but immediately getting those, those primitive shapes down to, uh, to go further with your design. Back to you, Dan. Super. Yeah, I'm, I'm a real fan of the quick shapes. I don't know how many times per day you guys are like, I'm making a plate. I'm going to make a rectangle. Now I'm going to extrude that rectangle. Why can't that all just be tied together into one thing? In fact, in the case of the sphere, you have four times fewer clicks to create a sphere than you did in ST6. Next piece I'm really excited about, part to sheet metal. So you may be wondering why we created this solid block. It was a fast solid block, but we're headed for a sheet metal part here. You may be familiar with, in the past, we've had a convert to sheet metal command, and it's been designed to take a part that's already thin and sheet metal-like and make it sheet metal savvy. Uh, here we're talking about instead being able to bend up a part around a solid model. It's a very fast method of creating sheet metal parts. Let's take a look at that now. All right, so let's jump back in. So we'll just finish off some geometry on this block. We'll put in some, some cuts on the top. So just put some extra sketch lines in. While we're doing this, just something else to point out with ST7, you will see there's uh, much improved sketch feedback, user feedback, as you're, as you're snapping the ends of lines onto edges or any type of cursor feedback for, for any types of sketch relationships. So you'll see that going on. It just makes it clearer to be able to use when you're sketching. 
So we'll um, finish these lines off. We'll put the top line in as well. Uh, I think I introduced the on-screen sketch dimensions when we created that quick shape, but you'll see this across all sketches. So here we've got the length of the line that we could type in, uh, or we could put the angle of the line in. So it's all heads up, user interface, really the focus on, on speeding up your design, accelerating your design. So we've got this uh, region that we can do a little synchronous cut in. We'll drop this down just a millimeter. And now we are ready to create this sheet metal component. So I think you'll like this method of creating sheet metal parts. It uh, gives you a, uh, just another route, maybe slightly quicker for, or actually a lot quicker for something like this component. So it's on the, the tools menu. We can choose this part to sheet metal command. To start off with, we've got this window to set up the global options of the sheet metal. So what's your global corner treatment? What's the global gap? All that kind of initial setup, we okay that. And then to start creating this sheet metal part, it's as easy as just clicking the edges. It's gonna fold the sheet metal around that solid block. We can specify the thickness. We can switch which way around we want the thickness to be. So obviously we've, we've modeled to the outer extent. We don't want to add sheet metal on top of that. We want it to be inside. So really we're folding sheet metal inside the solid block. Solid edge is automatically ripping those edges that need to be ripped for us. This is all blue in preview. We can tweak any of the corner treatments if we want to override that, uh, those global settings. We've got eight to choose from. And once we're happy with all of that, we can accept that and we've got our sheet metal component created. So yeah, nice, nice and fast in ST7, really like that. All right, super. This is one of my favorite features. I have quite a few. I have a list of five or 10 favorite features, I must admit. But it's a real, excuse me? Are they all number ones? Uh, they're all number ones, yes. <laughs> they, uh, I, um, this particular one, very fast to create the sheet metal parts. Uh, and the corner treatments are available, so you can quickly put in the, you know, the real manufacturing information you need. And in fact, we did some testing on this. We built that exact same part in ST6, the quote, old-fashioned way. We built the same thing in ST7. It was five times faster using this new technology. So that's a brilliant performance improvement. Next up is 3D Measure. We've looked at 3D Measure. You've told us many times about 3D Measure, how it needs to be better. It needs to be comprehensive in a single command. It needs to look great. It needs to be heads up. All those things happen in ST7. Yep, let's take a look. So we'll go back into designing this part. You'll notice there's some bolts in the background to mount it to the, uh, the skid at the bottom. So what we'll use is this 3D measure tool. And I think the first thing you'll notice is, is how quick we managed to get all of those dimensions on there. Just a couple of clicks on the bolts. We've got that graphical heads up, X, Y, Z, or Z, depending on which country you're from, of those different uh, locations of the bolts. And this automatic notepad that's popped up on the right-hand side, giving us all other possible dimensions. This was all from those, those simple clicks. We didn't need to choose what uh, exactly we wanted. So we've got a whole variety of things there. We're after the diameter because we need to put a hole in, so six mil, we'll remember that. It's even giving us things like total cumulative length of uh, all of the uh, spacings between those bolts. What's also great about this 3D measure tool, if we close out of the tool, that notepad stays up there. So if you need to reference that for future, like we're going to do now, it stays up there as long, you, long as you need it to, and you can copy and paste those values from that, that box. All right, back to you, Dan. Perfect, so I think you see there, and you really gotta look at it probably in ST7 in detail. Uh, in our beta presentation, there were 11 slides on 3D measure <laughs> and everything you can do in it. So there's a lot of detail to dig into there but multiple measurements from the single command. The graphical X, Y, Z, I don't have to puzzle that out. It's, you know, it's color coded, it's heads up, and of course the notepad where you can cut and paste and really get that information between commands very easily. Next up we're gonna talk about holes. So a hole is a hole, right? No. No, most people, I mean, you guys are designers or engineers, and a hole is a very important design element. You place holes daily. There's people in this room place, I wouldn't even say thousands of holes daily, tens of thousands of holes daily. And so we've gone back and looked at this very important core functionality and completely redone it to be both standards-based and to really have a whole new uh, way to, to work with it. So let's take a look. Yeah, so now this is something that a lot of people have been after, standards-based holes. So. Yeah, let's jump back in. So we've got our 3D measure notepad up there so we know exactly where we need the holes to be. But let's take a look at this, uh, this brand new hole interface for ST7. 
So it's much more graphical. You can clearly work your way through this. It's nice and intuitive. Let's start at the top left, where you can see the different types of holes that we want to choose from. Do you want countersunk, counterbore, threaded hole? Actually, threaded holes probably worth just taking a quick look at. Some feedback that we did get was you, you want different ways of dimensioning the thread on the hole. Do you want to dimension the tap drill diameter? Do you want to dimension the internal minor diameter, the nominal diameter? You get all of that choice in ST7. We don't want a threaded hole, we just want a straight through hole for this one, so let's move on. Top drop down, standards based. Choose from a standard, you don't need to choose geometric size, so choose from your standard that you require. If we go down to this next one, this is where we choose the size, it's a six mil bolt, so we want an M6 hole. But on top of that, what type of tolerance, what type of fit do we want? Do we want a close H12, normal H13, loose H14? We choose this. Solid Edge gives us exactly the right dimensions, so there's no more looking up in a little manual, your Zeus handbook or whatever. Solid Edge will look after you, and it will give you exactly the right dimension first time. So we'll snap those holes in. We could just keep on selecting the center of those bolts to put the holes in the right location, but because we've got that measure, tool, uh, that measure notebook still up there on the right-hand side, we'll use the uh, a little pattern tool just to pattern those in the right direction. So I mentioned before just the ability to copy and paste from the notepad. So it is a great ability. It's a good reference there for you to, uh, to continue your design work. So we'll pop these in and finish off this design. And even though we created this sheet metal part in a different method than maybe you're used to, of course we can flatten this in exactly the same way as you're used to, so we might as well flatten this just because we can. <laughs> All right, looking good. So that part completed. Beautiful. Nice. All right, thanks. I, I take a lot of pride in the fact that this release, we've gone back to basics. So stuff that's been there since maybe version one, we're going back and saying, that's just not good enough. We want that to be better. You know, specify the bolt size rather than the hole size. How's the bolt going to fit? Is it going to be a tight fit? Is the clearance fit exactly what is it? And we'll let the system do all the hard work there for you. It's very consistent and visual, and it's very much built around those international standards. Again, working with some of our beta customers, for example, um, Ditchwitch, who's with us here today, and could perhaps be back there advancing my slides for me. <laughs> Six, okay. Uh, Ditchwitch, who's here with us today, um, they make all sorts of, they originally made sort of the trenchers, that's why they're Ditchwitch, but I see they make all sorts of things now in terms of earth moving equipment. Uh, you know, this lets them focus on their design work, uh, just like the rest of you. You wanna focus on design, not trying to figure out how big should the hole be based on whatever. And so, um, you know, seeing a lot of enthusiasm for this. I'd also like to uh, give a shout out to Ditchwitch. They did bring the most customers here, 12, 12 users here from Ditchwitch, so let's give them a woo, 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 woo. <laughs> or, <laughs> what a conservative audience. Yes, we will applaud now. <laughs> woo, woo. Okay. All right, next up is one of my favorite features. Uh, so if I think Ralph said everything's a one, this is a 0.5. This is, <laughs> this is actually even more brilliant than a one. Uh, so if you think about ST6, we brought to you a new way to do sheet metal. Instead of just bending it up, you could do stamped sheet metal parts just much more quickly, like using emboss features and things like that. Of course, the obvious question is, now how do I flatten that? Well, let me tell you, what you normally do is buy a package that costs five or 10 or $15,000 more in order to flatten those kind of things. Not in ST7. In ST7, built into Solid Edge Classic and Premium, you'll be able to do this directly. So let's see how that works. Uh, so let's jump back in. So of course, we can flatten something like that. You just saw that straight break part, fair enough. What about something like this? Let's take a look at the uh, air filter cowling on this, this component. So we've got things like beads and stuff going on here. There is a, a double curvature dome that's sitting right in the center. 
how would, we, how would we flatten something like that? I mean, really, we need to do some sort of analysis on that because it would need to deform it. It really needs to do a bit of an FEA-type job where it's going to mesh up the part and it's going to deform it with its physical properties. So you saw Mark just go in there and apply a material to it. It needs to know a material for it to do this type of thing. But it does exactly that. It's meshing it up in the background. It will run this, this analysis, if you like. You don't see all of this. Of course, ease of use is key, so we want to make this nice and quick for you. Wait for it to do its job. Gives you a little message coming up saying this is the surface area of the completed blank. Done. And how, how quick and easy is that? There's your actual 3D model. There's your solid body. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's one of, and sort of blink and you'll miss it. It's like, yeah, that's in there. Nice and easy. But what about uh, something like upholstery, maybe? For some reason, in, I was in South Africa, there was a lot of customers talking to me about, can we, can we get flat patterns for upholstery? Again, these complex, complex surfaces, can we flatten that stuff out? Oh, yeah, now you can. Yeah, so even though we're talking fabric, put the correct material properties in it, we could get a blank body for something like this as well. So if you want to get cost estimations for fabric, yep, tick that box too. Back to you, Dan. Beautiful. So I think you can see now why that's a 0.5. This is something that people pay a lot of extra money for. If you're a uh, design and drafting user, a foundation user, this is one of several reasons to upgrade to classic or premium. It comes in classic and premium directly as well as we're going to be talking about a feature in a few minutes. That's another great reason to have Classic or Premium. And uh, very excited about it as well. Now, what we're seeing with synchronous technology is a lot of different users are adopting it. A lot of people's first step is with imported models. You get some geometry for some, from somewhere else, and you need to edit it in some intelligent way. And so we started on a journey there for making the model more intelligent with, let's say, Hole recognition, pattern recognition. Well, we now bring you pattern of patterns recognition. And this will make sense when you see a lot of machine parts or sheet metal parts with a lot of cutouts and so on. Yeah, so let's jump back in. And we'll just hide away that cushion we were working with. And we'll do some work on this sheet metal component that's underneath. So we've got a bunch of holes in here. Looks like some patterns going on. So we'll do some work and make some changes. I noticed, Mark, on the top right, there is a little, uh, it looks like a little icon telling us something. Read, okay, it's released. So this must be in another project. Could you find out where it's used, if we're using it in another project? Where, where used, okay. All right, could you give me a thumbnail of that? Is it, okay. All right, so yeah, we're using this part in another project. So we can't just edit it at this revision. We need to up-revise this. Hyperlink to up-revise. Okay, I like this. Can you automatically go to revision B for me? Nice, all right, done. So looked after us there, that's cool. So we can continue working on this. So let's get back into the model. Now, actually, this part, I think, came from SolidWorks or Inventor. It, it hasn't got a tree, it hasn't got a history. So we need to recognize the features that are in this so we can make some modifications. And as Dan was saying, in ST5, we could recognize holes. That's not new, so that's the first thing we'll do here, recognize the holes. In ST6, we could recognize a pattern, so we'll do that too. In ST7, we can recognize patterns of patterns. So you can see here, this is what we have. We have patterns of patterns. You can see at the top, it's talking about four occurrences of these patterns of patterns. And it's giving us the option of circular or rectangular recognition. Because we've got four holes in those corners around the, the central, we could do that circular, we could do that rectangular. We'll choose circular. And this means now that it's fully editable. So if we wanted to adjust the, the pattern of patterns in total, we can do that. So we'll adjust that. But if then post, post that uh, edit, we wanted to adjust one of those individual patterns, we could do that also. So if we change that circular recognition from four to six, that will then update all of those patterns of patterns. So great flexibility when you're working with, uh, with imported parts. Yep, looking good. Back to you, Dan. Super. So again, using synchronous technology, a lot of people bringing in those imported things. We're just continuing to build that out and make it more intelligent for you. Take advantage of that reuse. The fastest way to create something is to not create something. So I think this will allow you to do a lot more of that. Now we're going to shift gears a little bit here uh, and go back to where our model begins, and that's the sketches. Now, how many times have you tried to build up something that's like a, maybe a stiff wire and it's bent in several different planes and you're trying to get 2D sketches and wire them all together? Uh, that can be really complicated and difficult. And so with ST7, we introduce 3D Sketch. 
Okay, so let's go into a different product. Let's, uh, let's drop the helicopter and use something else. This is from one of our French customers, uh, Seb Group. If you've heard of um, the brands Moulinet and Krups and Tefal, that's all down to those guys. So this is a, a Tefal deep fryer. And the component we're going to design here, this, this wire uh, lift guide, it, it really lends itself to this, this new ST7 functionality of 3D sketch. So it's another in-context design. We'll uh, model this top down. So we'll go in and, and start this creation. So to get to access to these 3D sketch tools, there's a new tab, as you can see, in the top toolbar. And you've got a whole bunch of uh, sketching tools, all related and specific for 3D sketches. So let's start doing some work here. We'll snap it onto the, the central cylinder and pull it out from there. Again, you're seeing these, um, I can see them on my screen, I just about see them on the projector. Nice sketch feedback as you're relating into, in that case, concentric to the, uh, the uh, cylinder. It's a bit very clear what's going on. You'll also see the uh, on-screen dimensions for the, dimen uh, for the sketches. You saw this in 2D sketches. This is exactly the same in 3D sketches too, so across the board. And you'll also notice there, uh, Mark just dragged down this, this another triad. It's the 3D sketch triad. And it helps you in controlling which direction you're sketching in. Obviously, you have full flexibility, because now we're in 3D. So we can lock down into those different axes. You'll see the X, Y, and Z. Some will disappear as we can toggle through. So you're just toggling through on your keyboard which direction you want. When it comes to sketching something like an arc, in this case, it wouldn't make sense to lock onto an axis. So we can lock onto a plane. So you'll see a green plane here come up. Again, you can toggle that and lock through where you need it to be. All right, so we're just going to model one side of this. It's a symmetrical part, so we'll do one as a solid, and then we'll mirror it across onto the other side. So we'll just finish this off. And something I do want to, uh, actually another point to make is the, the sketch relationships that you're familiar with in 2D, they of course work in 3D as well. So if you need to line any of the sketch items up, you can do. We can put in our 3D sketch fillets. So if we need to round off those corners in 3D, we can do that too. So we'll make use of those and select those round. Yeah, and the sketch relationships, yeah, so we can snap those up to the, uh, the reverse or the bracket sitting behind it. So we'll just finish off doing this, some of the sketch work, and then we'll continue. Pop in another sketch fillet at the top. All right, not looking all right. Okay, so something down the bottom right here that Mark just used. There's this new uh, quick view cube to, to move your, your view around of your model so you can quickly navigate what you're looking at. It's very intuitive to use, doesn't really need much explanation, but it is something that's very obvious in you in the uh, in ST7 user interface. So you've got top right, front. You just click on the faces, it'll rotate the model around so it's very clear to see what's going on. If you click the corners, you can get round into different isometric views of the model. And also you notice there's these little arrows, they'll go around in 90 degree increments so you can rotate your model around. You can very clearly um, yeah, manipulate what, what you're doing. Great for 3D sketching because of course we can be modeling in all different directions so it, it, it's very clear for us in which direction we're going in. But it is always there in any, uh, in any environment apart from 2D, of course. All right, so let's continue. So that little cylinder, why did we have that there? Well, it's the inside face of the, uh, of the little handle at the top, so we needed to take a measurement of that. We're going to uh, sweep a profile around this 3D sketch path, so let's use the 3D measure tool to, to take a measurement. And then we'll pop a plane on the side here to do our sketching. Also notice in ST7 the names of the planes coming up, so it's very clear to see what you're working on. And then here we will sketch our circle at the right diameter. Again, we can use the on-screen dimensions that you saw previously, makes it nice and quick. And we will sweep that profile along the 3D sketch path. So synchronous, of course, comes into play here if we want to make any geometry changes. So we'll, I suppose we'll mirror it across to the other side first. 
But that underlying 3D sketch that we had, if we needed to make edits post-creation, we don't need to think about going back to that 3D sketch. We can just use the synchronous edits if we wish. Maybe if you wanted to grab that uh, lift guide and move it into the, the clamp, I think there's a, like a real, real clamp that we need to snap it up to. We could use the steering wheel. Uh, or, yeah, if we wanted to, that's all right. No, nope. he doesn't feel like he wants to show me that. <laughs> yeah, so we can just fan select all of those faces on the ones that we want to use. And here, remember, for those who don't use synchronous, that steering wheel, the reason we call it the steering wheel, it is your main control. So if we wanted to adjust this and snap it into that uh, bracket on the back, we could make a movement of the steering wheel half of the diameter of that profile of the sweep. So remember, you can type in equations before uh, in that steering wheel to, to allow it to move in the right position. And then we can move the geometry. In this case, that means we're going to get it right onto that bracket at the back. All right, so let's, let's take a look at how this whole thing is working. Could you maybe take a look at the mechanism, maybe grab a bit of the mechanism and see how it's working? Maybe we grab the handle and see what it looks like. Can we do that? Hmm. Yeah, that okay, looks nice. Okay, looking cool. All right, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah, up to you, Dan. Okay. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the fact that you guys applauded. If you didn't applaud, I was going to applaud. <laughs> Just because I know how much work 3D Sketch was. This was a big effort by a lot of team members. Really happy to bring it to you. Um, as you can see, it's available in part. It's also available in assembly and sheet metal. And that ability to just create across the, you know, the three dimensions very intuitively. As we said, it's great for those swept kind of features like wires, uh, you know, bent wire kind of stuff. But also for those of you that are doing uh, tubing or pipe routing, that kind of thing. Uh, of course, we have the existing express route tools, but these 3D sketching tools can be the most productive way to do some of that work as well. Now, one of the other things you saw, uh, and you see this throughout, are just these things in Solid Edge we're bringing to you as part of that amazing user experience. A quick View Cube is, is really nice, particularly when you're working on someone else's model. I don't know how many times they've done Control F to get the front view and you get the top view because you didn't know which was the front view or the top view. So just use this to always just go to exactly what you want to see. Those heads up uh, display of values. And we've also reworked all the sketch handles and little subtle stuff like you know, when you're locating something and there's the cursor there and it has the little locate zone, well, it's kind of covering up what you're trying to locate. So we've even reworked the cursor to make that easier. So a lot of attention to detail in ST7. Next thing is duplicate component. This is very exciting stuff. Today we have the ability to pattern circular, pattern rectangular. This is a brand new technology that is unique to Solid Edge. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think you'll like this. This is, this is really cool. Just, just before we go into that, um, Mark, I think Greg sent you an email beforehand. Have you got it on you? Yeah, great. That's uh, the project that we need to work on. Yeah, if you click on that hyperlink, this will show you a nice visual display of the project we're going to work on. I think you'll really like this. It makes it very clear to understand what jobs we need to do, our to-do list. So we'll get this loaded up. Yeah, there it is here. So it's, it's quite a simple one. So we've not got too much to do. If you just arrange it, that's nice. Top one, that red folder, that's our project. See there, it's telling us 50% complete, so we've got some jobs to do. The blue folder just beneath that, that's our, that's our ECO, our engineering change order. We've got some jobs on there. And then the, the motor beneath, that's, that's the thing we need to work on. So if you, if you actually click on that blue ECO, and if you go and take a look at the properties, it will give us our to-do list. So we've got to complete the engine mounts, the fuel rail, turbo hose, and build the frame engine, and engine test frame. OK. So if you, if you don't mind going along with this, we'll, we'll do all of these to-dos. And if you could give me a thumbnail of the motor, that is the one. I'll just load that up into Solid Edge then, and we'll, we'll get cracking on all of that. Get cracking. Is that an English thing? Yeah. <laughs> Still teaching them vocabulary. All right, so let's, uh, let's load this up. Now, uh, before we take a look at duplicate component, just a couple of things in the assembly environment that I think is, uh, is worth pointing out. So first of all, um, great for new users uh, to insert components into this assembly. On our home tab, we've now got a button that is insert component. So it's quite you know, a very, very simple thing, but it'll stop new users in your company tapping you on the shoulder saying, how do I insert a component? So you press the button, takes you to the parts library, so it's, it's nice and quick to be able to insert the components in. All right, so we'll get hold of the component that we require for this. 
Just, just before we do, there is, is worth me pointing out some other things. So we have, um, uh, obviously, the quick way to, to snap components into position. You're used to that, being able to build in the uh, assembly relationships with that component as you drag it in. But something new in ST7, as we click on those assembly relationships that are created, do you notice it's ghosted all of the components, apart from the ones that we're, we're dealing with with that assembly relationship. Just gives you clarity on what you're working on. You'll also notice there's some more right-click options as well. So if we wanted to zoom to that assembly relationship, it'll take you straight to that area in the assembly. It's just all about this user interface, yeah. All about ease of use. So duplicate component. We've, we've built it up now, so uh, you know, this, <laughs> it's better be good, Mark. It better be good. All right. OK. So we can see that we've got this rubber engine mount uh, here. We've got a sub-assembly of components. We've got the bolts and the washers. We need to pattern these across into their different locations. So this is where we'll make use of duplicate component. So we'll pick up all of the items that we need. If we just zoom out a little bit, you'll notice that uh, we have one, two, three, and there's a fourth location, all in different orientations, different positions around the assembly. Now, you can tell Solid Edge which component to look at to go from, which component to go to, so it knows where it's patterning. Notice the graphics preview in ST7. This is across all patterning commands. Um, but we want to pattern for all of those other components. There's, there's two others to go. So one click, it'll pick those others up for us. It automates the orientation. Yeah, how else would you do that? I'm glad we showed that. It's kind of yeah. magical. If, if you're trying to duplicate a component or make a pattern, but it's irregular, so in this case we had the if engine you, mounts that are in all sorts of different orientations. So how do you pattern it to those different locations? Yeah. Well, the answer is you use duplicate component. We basically can take a component and say, here's your surroundings. Now find other similar surroundings and put it there also. So it would find all the other engine mounts that are using the same kind of parts and would duplicate it around to all those different orientations. So the amount of time we save here is, is dramatic, certainly, in this engine mount case. But if you're doing something like this track here where you have to duplicate components around a very unusual orientation, you could simply say, from here to here, and the system figures out the rest for you. We, in fact, did some productivity testing on this. And it, in ST6, took a certain amount of time. It actually took 10 times less time using duplicate components. So this is why we're very excited about it and, in fact, have a patent pending on it. Uh, not only that, it, it means you have less relationships to deal with, so you actually have a duplicate component feature, and there's a lot less to worry about. All right. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is, is peer locate, and a little bit more than that also, uh, limited save and limited update. Um, or no, I've got to talk about that in a sec. Talk about peer locate. So oftentimes you find yourself wanting to organize your data so that maybe all your tubes are down in a subassembly. But now you're down in that subassembly and you need to locate some stuff. And so you're doing interpart copies. And there's a lot of complexity involved. We've taken all that complexity out in ST7. All right, so let's jump back in and we'll take a look at a different area of this assembly. We'll go up to the, uh, the fuel rail and we'll do some work with these tubes. It's, a, it's a, an excellent application for us to show you peer locate. So here we've got all of this at sub-assembly level. That's the most important thing. So we're not at the top level. You can see in the tree that we've, we're in sub. And we want to reference other components, either beside this or above this. And this is what peer locate allows you to do. It gives you complete flexibility. So wherever you're working, whatever level you're working within the assembly, you can reference those components. So we'll pick out the, the items that we want here, put in our sketch lines cross-referencing each of those, and then we'll pop in this tube. So peer locate, that helped us create this. Something else to point out is in ST7, you can save all of the favorites for tube creation, so bend radius, outer diameter, all of those items as a favorite, so you can choose from the drop-down later down the line. Great when you've got multiple components of the same type. And this includes end treatment options as well. Set those as a drop-down favorite, really accelerates your design as you're going through and doing the same sort of thing. And probably just to, to make a very clear point that we're not in the top level here, we're working in a sub-assembly, would you mind just hiding all of those components in the background once we've finished with that? So th this should make it a bit clearer that these, these, these tubes that we've been creating are all in that sub-assembly. Those are the components we're referencing when we're not with it. They're in the assembly above it. And this is what peer locate really allows you to do, complete flexibility. 
So some great time savings there for those of you who do a lot of in-context assembly design, locate upwards, sideways, and you also no longer need write access to that top-level context. So it's just a lot easier, much better flow for you. Uh, as I said, we've worked with some beta customers. If you've ever watched a Blu-ray, seen a Blu-ray, Singulus are one of the largest manufacturers of the machines that make Blu-ray discs. They came to Beta in Huntsville and looked at this and said, that stuff is really going to save us a lot of time as they work on these very large machines. Next up is fixed link curve. You go to the hardware store, you buy a hose. It's not 2.17 inches long and sometimes 2.7 inches long. It's always the same amount. So let's see how that works. Yeah, so great for the quest of standardization. If we take a look at another part of this assembly, let's take a look at this turbo uh, wastegate hose. So here, if we wanted to do a modification on the, the port here, let's use the, the steering wheel. We'll do a little rotation on this. So here, we'd, we'd probably buy this hose. It's off-the-shelf component. It's a standard length. And in ST6, if we were to come in here, in here and rotate using the steering wheel, this is what you'd expect. You'd expect the tube to get longer or shorter, yeah, to adjust and, and keep with that, that rotation of the port. Ideally, that's not what we want. We want to be able to fix that, that length of that tube, that hosing, at a specified length. So that's what we can do in ST7. When you're creating that curve, you have an extra option now to fix that, that curve length. So you can specify that as a standard length off the shelf at 370 millimeters. You can also help it with this little triad, uh, just, just help solid edge, so when you are adjusting that curve, you can prescribe so which, way it's likely to, uh, which way it's likely to modify. So you've got control over this. But if we see the outcome, then if we go back, use the steering wheel, and we'll modify that uh, hose position by rotating the port round, this is what it gives you. So it's, it's much truer representation. It, you can see now the interaction of the components, if they're interfering with each other. It's sticking at that fixed length. It's a nice little option, but yeah, very valuable. Perfect, thanks. So the next thing we want to talk about is frame design. So there's a lot of people out there building a lot of machines, and they all have these frames. And so every, I often actually happen across customers who are not using frame design. If, if you're building frames and don't use frame design, you need to look into it. It's in your standard solid edge, and we continue to enhance it. So last year, we built it so that it could build on solid models, the edges of solid models, and be very quick to do that. We've enhanced that significantly both in the UI and in how quickly you can do that with some automatic orientation. So let's take a look at that here in just a sec. Indeed, let's continue. So we'll jump back into ST7. We'll switch over to another part of the assembly. So we're going to create this, uh, this test rig, the frame for the engine. And you'll notice we have these, uh, these yellow blocks in there. So we're going to use this ST6 functionality, being able to use the edges of those solid blocks to create these frame members. All right, so what's, what's new in ST7? Let's access the frame window. So this has been overhauled. Nice new visual interface for ST7, much clearer to understand how you're setting up the frames. And something I want to point out here is the orientation control. So if you, you, you know right from the start, well, I want my mitres to be on the side of this, these blocks that we're creating. I want the straight cuts to be at the top. You can set this orientation up with the preview right from the word go. Here we need to choose exactly what profile we've got, so we'll use this nice search functionality. We'll go in and, uh, and find what type of profile we want. So from our drop-down, solid edge frame profiles, from the DIN standard, don't want round tubing, but we'll go square tubing. Instant results for us, nice, it's found those. Four mil, 50 by 50, yep, we'll use that. Okay, so to create this, this frame, Let's just recap on the great ST6 functionality. The different selection methods have been able to use the bodies, the faces, the edges, or hybrid selection with the, the sketch lines. So first of all, let's take that rear block. And you see here the orientation control right up front. We've now got the mitres on the side of the block. We've got the straight cuts on the top. So that's, that's all about that, uh, that initial setup. It saves us time having to come in and out of this. We do it once, and then we can quickly go through the rest of the workflow. You'll notice, Mark, they're also just unselected, or deselected, I should say, one of those top edges. So again, it's a nice streamlined flow as you're going through and creating these, these frame members. He's picking uh, individual single edges or sketch lines. You can use those together as you're creating the framework. So we'll finish off this, this front section. 
And then there's another option I want to show you in ST7, which is, is very cool. All right, so that's our little front piece done. So we've got this center section to do to link up that rear frame and the front frame. So here we'll choose the face selection. And if you just hide away some of the other components, this might, might make it a little bit easier to see. So here there's obviously four edges that we're picking up. And those two shorter edges in previous releases would get redundant profiles on there. That's no longer the case. So it's seen that there's already profiles that exist across those short edges. So it's just saving you the time, just keeping it all nice and tidy for you. Probably one more thing. Let's just take a look. I reckon that's not quite up against the engine frame mark. I just didn't notice as we went in there yet. Yeah, there's a bit of a gap that needs to change. If we just grab that, that yellow face, so this is the benefit of using the, the edges of those blocks to create the frame profiles around because you can use synchronous technology on the solid geometry. So we could just drag that face. We can snap it onto that rubber engine mount. And because the engine frame is built on the edges, that's going to update. So you're going to get perfect design, nice and quick. Very nice. So we, we continue to enhance frame design and bring it forward, make it more modern, make it more usable. I encourage all of you who haven't taken a look at frame design or haven't looked at it in a while to look at it certainly again. In this particular instance, using this new technology, did the same thing in ST6, same thing in ST7. That motor mount is two times faster in ST7. The next piece is component tracker. So we often say no part is an island. You know, you guys are out there building assemblies, large assemblies, small assemblies, and we want to bring you a lot of productivity in that workflow. Two things here with Component Tracker, and, and actually something we call limited update, limited save. You're in a large organization, people are making changes underneath you. Shouldn't you have the right to decide when you're going to take those changes and pay the performance hit of updating everything? Shouldn't the system automatically figure out for you how to get all that up to date in the right order? The answer is yes, it should. And that's exactly what's happened here. We've, we've loaded this assembly up. We're aware that other teams are working on different, uh, different areas, different projects on this, uh, this engine. But we didn't want to yeah, pay the price of loading all of those updates in as we loaded up the assembly. We wanted to take that control and say, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of those changes, but just, just give me the assembly nice and quick. We can do our work. And then when we're ready, we can update it. So that's what limited update is all about. And that's the little icon, Mark, if you just hover over it so you can know where it is on the tools menu. Limited update, top, top right, just if you could hover over the little icon. That one there, limited update. Again, nice tool tips, so you can clearly see where it is. But what about when you want to update all of the geometry? That's when component tracker comes into play. So here is an uh, interface, and it t tells you with a little red mark any components that are out of date. So we can see here there is one. This is maybe from another design team. We'll just spin around and take a look at that. So maybe it's a distributor or something, and we can see that the, the top mount is, is not in the correct location. But now we're ready to update it. We, we've made that choice. If you were to do this manually, so you'd have to go and find where that is, open the file up, update it, update the assembly, the relationship, so forth, so forth, so forth. Not in ST7, one button. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff that we didn't even have time to get into, and this is probably, this doesn't even cover it all either. But patterning along a curve, we've had that in part for a long time, now in assembly also. Rename FOA member. Who wants rename FOA member? Rename FOA member. It's so logical. You should be able to rename an FOA member. ST7, all set. We continue to do a lot of enhancements to synchronous technology, amongst them also recognizing chamfers, in addition to the pattern of patterns, being able to make better offset relationships between faces and more. One of the points of this conference is certainly for you to just get a feel here up on stage and get out there and dig into it uh, in the field here in, in a few moments.
So we've been talking a lot about 3D modeling, but as you know, we are the drawing creation guys. We always intend to be the drawing creation guys. If we ever fall short on that metric, you need to tell us and we will make sure that we're working harder on drawing creation. We know that ultimately the product of many of you is a really good engineering drawing. And so we've continued to do a lot of work on this in ST7. Right, so let's jump back in. We had that drawing to do within our project, didn't we, Mark? So uh, let's go back into the drawing environment. And the first thing to take a look at is, I'm sure you all are aware of uh, things like dynamic display on, uh, on drawing input. We'll take um, a drawing view of uh, the, the gear housing of that helicopter. So it's nice and quick, you know, scrolling the scale, dynamic display of the view. Well, we now have an ST7 dynamic display of all view types. So across the board, if you're wanting to do section views, detail views, whatever, dynamic display is going to be there. So maybe we pop in a detail view just to show this clearly. So what I mean by dynamic display is it's, it's just showing you what the view will be before you place it down. And that's actually post-creation as well on a, uh, a detail view. We can move that around, make sure we've got exactly what we want in that window. Let's pop in some dimensions, do that nice and quick, just retrieve those from the model, nice and speedy there. Maybe we can tidy those up as well, since ST6 we have the range dimensions, so a single click on the views just to get those nice and tidy. Maybe do a little tweak just to get that right, it's looking good. Take a look at some, uh, some datums, some associativity in ST7 with, with datum labels, some symbols. So if we pop in a datum at the top here, AA, and we put in a feature control frame down at the bottom, we want to reference that datum, the tolerance of how parallel this face is to the top one. So we'll just uh, we'll place this in, put in the right uh, values that we're after. But what I want to show you in ST7 is the associativity between these two. So if we go back up to that datum and we make a modification to it, just watch down at the bottom on that control frame. Yeah, fully associative, just links straight through. Just saves you time having to go through and manually adjust those. Let's move into the assembly side of things. So parts lists, what's new in ST7 there? If we highlight any of the, or select, just hover over any of those components in the parts list, Look in the view, everything is highlighted in red, or the components that you're clicking on highlighted in red. You can multiple select, you can single select. It's very clear to see what you've got in the parts list. Alternatively, there's a thumbnail option. So now if you hover over any of the rows, you're going to get a thumbnail of each of those components so you can, can clearly see which components you have. You don't have to go zooming around your, uh, your drawing sheet. What about breaking out individual sub-assemblies or component views? You can now pick from the view wizard, rather than having to go and find it, delve down into the folder locations, you can readily find those. It's placing it down on the drawing view in the same orientation as the parent view, giving us that ISO view first off. If you wanted to change that, so let's do another component view, very quick to get to it now. We can adjust that from the, uh, the ribbon at the top. So we can pop down a front view, we can orthographically project from there. So nice and quick to break out those components. Perfect for frame design. So if you wanted to take out a, uh, a single frame profile, use exactly the same workflow. You find the particular profile that you're interested in detailing, comes in in that parent orientation. We can, of course, change that nice and quick, scale it using your middle mouse scroll wheel, and you've got those views down, ready to dimension up the mitres. It's a real nice, real nice workflow. I think you're gonna like this, though. Let's take a look at coordinate dimensions in ST7. So this is now much quicker. If we select each of these little circular cutouts on that component we're creating, ST7 will now automatically jog, align, group each of those, just making it nice and quick. No, 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 no. We can, we can do one better than that, get, get rid of those. How's about if we automatically created for you, for them, for you, all of those? Maybe one click? Maybe put a vertical one in as well, just because we can. Positive and negative dimensions all in, so yeah, how fast is that? All right, what, one more thing. Let's, let's put in some ordinate dimensions on the child as well. So if you want to keep on coordinate dimensioning from your original parent dimension, you can just put those on that detail view you saw over to the right. Just with single clicks, it joins on to us nice and easy. Yeah, like it. To you, Dan. Excellent, thanks. So I think um, you saw some really exciting things here, of course, more, more modern and more dynamic drawing views. The associative annotations, I think, is another one of these sleeper features. You, you can never get your geometric tolerancing wrong now, that the datum is referencing the wrong thing. 
And it's not just about geometric tolerancing. It, you can reference associatively things from your drawing views, things from other annotations, things from a balloon. All of that stuff can be associatively referenced. Of course, a lot of streamlining in how you create the views. We have a lot of people putting the parts in the same file as the assembly, and we want to make that fast. And of course, the what I affectionately call the Kyle Joiner command, automatic coordinate dimensioning. <laughs> now, the one other thing I would say here is that we have just scratched the barest surface of drafting. I was looking through the beta presentation last night, and there are hundreds of other things in drafting. I encourage you to get to Ricky Black's or one of the other sessions and see what all's new there. There's just a ton, ton of stuff, way more than we could possibly touch on here. Uh, but just in the coordinate dimensioning itself, 10x faster, I think that's pretty much an understatement. You guys know how long it would have taken to do all that by hand with all the little joggles and stuff. It's just, it's just crazy uh, how much faster it is now. Now, I'm very excited to transition to the next topic, which uh, you guys have seen this car. We talked about the green power car. You've been seeing this rendering you know, in the, in the right here. And we've been able to render and do photorealistic rendering of models for some time. It has not always been the easiest thing to do. We're proud to bring to you now really the state-of-the-art technology surrounding photorealistic rendering. We have a partnership now with Luxion, who are the makers of Keyshot, the most wonderful photorealistic rendering engine in the world. And you're going to now see that as part of Solid Edge, as part of Classic, and as part of Premium, you will have Keyshot built in. So let's see what that's all about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's jump in, let's take a look at a different product. So you want to render this, you want to do it nice and quick, you maybe don't know all the details of rendering, so how do, how do we get to this? So just on the tools menu, Keyshot render, click that button, and it will start up the interface that is Keyshot. We haven't integrated this inside the same window as Solid Edge, because for those of you who have used Keyshot, you know it's a nice productive interface, we didn't want to mess with that, we wanted to keep those separate. But we obviously, obviously do want to bring across geometry. We want to bring across appearances. Animations would be nice as well. We can do that. We'll take a look at that a little bit later on. But this is going to bring all, of, all the materials across into the key shot window. And then you can play around to your heart's content with making any modifications that you wish. So on the left-hand side, materials. We'll take a look at this first. Tons of materials in here. So you know, different metals, different uh, plastics, soft touch. If you're thirsty, there's beer and coffee, and you know whatever you whatever you want. And these are just starting points as well. If you want to adjust these, again, heart's content. You make some changes. Keep dragging and dropping them onto your model and see how they look. There's also a favourites uh, area. So if you've got maybe brand colours that you you commonly want to play around with on different components, let's let's try this whole thing in blue instead. Again, just a nice drag and drop, and it quickly updates. Notice the window is uh, it's what we call a progressive renderer. So it's, it's constantly rendering to give you at least the quality that you're going to get when you click the final render button. So you get a really good idea of what that render is going to be live. What about environments? What about the background? So you'll see some 360 degree panoramic images. You can use these to, to scope around your model. Or there's these sort of funny looking things like why have these got white blobs all over them? Well, in a, a photographer's studio, those umbrellas where you have lights shining in them to give you different soft light effects, that's exactly what these are. They're not so much background images, even though it, it is using an image. These are provi this, this provides the lighting as well. We call them high dynamic range images. Gives you all of that great information and realism for your product. You could also use your own product images. Maybe if you want to put these on some face towels, put, put the razor there, we can pop that on. We can adjust it around, rotate it around, move it into the right position so you can, you can put it into a, a product setting. So it looks like it's floating a bit there, Mark. Can we, can we adjust it a little bit? Is there any little tools that we can use? Ground plane? Yeah, that's, that's cool. So there's extra detail in Keyshot as well that you can play around with here. What we're going to use is a ground plane just to clip off the bottom. The towels are, are obviously soft, so we want to make it look like it's sitting in the towels. So this is what the clipping plane does. We can just clip it off just subtly, just to add that realis realism. I warn you, this is really addictive. You just, <laughs> I'll just do the, and I'll just do this. Maybe the perspective. Can we just change the perspective a little bit? So there's a little slider at the top there. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, cool. Yeah, looking good. So yeah, you can you just spend hours on this, but it's awesome. It's awesome. If we want to go back to Solid Edge, maybe we need to make some design changes. So this is really important. How do we link with, with that key shot window? If we needed to, to change this geometry, that razor foil, so the geometry is going to change in, in shape with the cutouts, the, the appearance is going to change with this. 
And we want that to update in Keyshot. We don't want anything else to update because we've been, we've been playing around with it. So one button, update into Keyshot, just updates that for you. It's a real nice workflow for us here. So I think you see it's both tightly integrated, but key here is it's best in class. Keyshot does just some of the world's best rendering. Also, it's integrated into all the different environments. Those of you who've been doing photorealistic rendering have been asking not just assembly, but hey, part sheet metal. That's true in ST7. And all the face and, and uh, view styles are transferred. Again, very key. This comes in solid edge in classic and premium. So again, if you're a foundation or a uh, D&D uh, user, both the, the blank body thing and the key shot both come in classic. And most of you are classic users already, so as soon as you get your ST7, I was going to say CD, that's really old, DVD, no, download, then uh, you can take advantage of key shot right away. Now, we also, you saw we established the live link, which is important. But also, um, another really exciting advance that key shot has done recently is something called the key shot cloud. And so the Keyshot Cloud allows you to upload your, your materials and scenes that you may have or download from other users materials and scenes that you want to use. So there's like a whole community built around Keyshot and so on. There's also rendered animations. So Solid Edge has a pretty sophisticated environment for uh, doing motors and exploded views and all that kind of thing. You can set all that up in, key, in Solid Edge with your very extensive environment for animations, and with a one button, send it to Keyshot, where they can do all the hard work of the beautiful rendering. And so let's, uh, let's take a look at that here in just a second. Old timey music with. that look in your sales presentations. Yeah. All right. Um, as I mentioned, we've worked very closely with our partner uh, Luxion on this. Keyshot, I can't tell you enough about that product. It's a wonderful product, wonderful relationship. And with that, I'd like to invite on stage Thomas Teeger from Luxion. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Actually, you know, prepared this whole thing and this whole spiel, and actually Dan and uh, Oliver did such a fantastic job. You know, I'm almost done here. But what's great about this, um, this relationship, and in particular Keyshot for Solid Edge, is the fact that this is, as Dan has said, this is not an integrated version. This is not a stripped-down version of what you usually get. It's not an abstract API that has been taken to make fit into a modeling environment like it has been done for so many years for, by so many companies. Now, Solid Edge and the team at Solid Edge actually realized the opportunity here on uh, bringing best-in-class technology uh, to the masses and by keeping it outside and just really focusing on this live integration between the two applications. And what that gives you is uh, the fact that you're not, again, you're not getting an abstract version, but you're getting the, uh, the same product that thousands of our customers are actually using on a daily basis. And this is just a small snapshot of uh, the customers that we actually have that are using Keyshot in a daily environment. And of course, with that, with these customers, what you also get is a large community. So the days are over where you have to find the eight solid edge users they may use rendering and uh, somewhere across the internet, right? You can come right there to the Keyshot site, for example, to the Keyshot forum and get access to these users that represent these companies. And as you can see, you are in pretty good uh, company here. It doesn't matter what the product is, whether it's Legos for the kids, whether it's right below, whether it's uh, high-end cars. Really doesn't matter. Cars, machinery, uh, jewelry, you name it. Organic materials, it doesn't really matter. And let me give you a couple of uh, examples to show you. And once again, Keyshot for Solid Edge will be able to do that 
just uh, like our customers are doing with the uh, commercial version that has been available for the past four years. So here's one example. It's, um, everybody recognizes that, um, especially memorable because it got just sold for uh, $2 billion to Google. Um, and uh, actually, you know, who does the design work and also the render work is a small design firm out of San Jose built by the name of Bolt Design. So they're doing all that. In uh, this case, it's not necessarily the final marketing shots, but uh, client presentation. And maybe that was actually the image that, sold, uh, that got the $2 billion for Nest. Who knows? Um, as I mentioned, the um, remote is not working. Um, there you go. Uh, we talked about high-end cars. So we're going for more commodities. We're going to, uh, to cars, for example. Uh, just as to after you purchase your Nest, uh, maybe you want to just uh, browse for your next Ferrari. Uh, in this particular not ne case, not necessarily a commodity. This is uh, the price tag around um, $1 million and up. But all these images that you actually see on that, uh, on that microsite are here are also done directly in Keisha and used for marketing purposes. Um, and that, of course, brings up the next topic. It's not just Ferrari using it, but Fiat as a whole with the, their um, subsidiary, if you will, Chrysler as well. Or maybe you're more into the machinery uh, type of things, um, more industrial type application. Again, it doesn't really matter here. Stanley Black & Decker and all their sub-brands, whether it's Stanley on one hand or Black & Decker or in this particular case, Bostage, using KeyShot right there in their daily product development process from concept all the way through to sales and marketing. Sporting goods. Uh, many of the uh, golf club manufacturers are actually using KeyShot. Wilson in particular has taken it a step further and when you go onto their website, in particular when you download their catalog, all the shots except for the bags, but well, we're gonna get there, except for the bags, everything is rendered in KeyShot as well. And of course, for them, also a huge time saver um, doing it directly from the digital model and really totally em eliminating the photo shoot. A different type of sports now, uh, if we're looking at that, uh, bicycle manufacturers, whether it's specialized on one hand or SRAM. Uh, on the other hand, in this particular case, they're using it for uh, design presentations. Uh, not so much on the marketing side yet, but that's just uh, another step. And then we can take it to a completely new level here. And again, it doesn't matter whether you're doing, on one hand, you're doing the, uh, the, the machinery or high-end cars or other commodities, or you build one-offs like this particular watch. This particular watch here, um, unfortunately, you couldn't no longer buy it. It's called Five Million, and the reason for that name is because that's how much it cost. And I just confirmed, actually, this morning prior to this presentation, that actually Jay-Z owns it. Um, I don't know whether it was the Keyshot rendering that sold him, uh, that, that, uh, that he was sold on. I was actually, or Beyonce for that matter. Um, but in the end, uh, this is an actual uh, rendering again. Uh, input geometry doesn't matter, but uh, this uh, geometry was taken then directly into Keyshot and rendered um, as the final presentation, the final marketing piece for Hublot. So in the end, that's what it is all about, really. It's about time and happiness that we're really uh, providing here, and that fits right in with the whole ST7 theme. And uh, we're really excited about uh, KeyShot for Solid Edge and looking forward to continuing to work with the Solid Edge team and bringing you KeyShot for Solid Edge. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Really appreciate it. Super excited about this partnership. We've obviously been keeping a little quiet. You guys can all tweet about it now. It's very exciting stuff. Um, of course, you know, I, I'm really jazzed about Keyshot. Love the product. Uh, as well, the industry's jazzed. I know Al Dean is out here somewhere. Al Dean uh, runs the Develop 3D uh, organization. And I, I kind of love this quote here. Uh, System do all the donkey work. I think that's another British saying, but I think it's the right thing, right? You want the system to do the hard work for you, and for that, Keyshot wins every time. Now, we've been talking a lot about modeling, and you guys are modeling. We're going to make you more productive. You're going to produce more files. You're going to produce millions of files. It's a wonderful thing, unless they're very disorganized. Yeah, so apart from the, obviously, the new things in ST7 uh, that you maybe weren't used to because you didn't have ST7, there were some other things as well that were maybe slightly a little bit odd. So in, in the background, we've actually been running Solid Edge for SharePoint. This has been looking after all of our design work. So 
There we are, solid edge for share. Probably solid edge SP, as you may have heard of it. It's been looking after all of our project work as we were going through this. It's, it's a nice, simple to use design management system. It's based on Microsoft SharePoint, so that whole power and ease of use. Just to uh, recap on a couple of the things that we were looking at. So seamless integration with solid edge as you know it. You, you maybe sort of slightly notice something different, but you know, the open and save dialogues were the same, but you're getting just extra productivity. Things like automatic part numbering, automatic revisioning, solid edge looking after you there. And all of this data is stored in, in one place. So what does this mean to you as a company? Well, this means all of your stuff is in one place for backup. Good, because your data is pretty valuable to you. What does it mean to you guys as users? Well, well nothing, because it's, it's integrated, it's seamless, it's nice and transparent. Streamline revisions with accurate where used knowledge. Do you remember when we were looking at this, uh, the seat? Underneath the seat cover, we were uh, using the pattern of patterns recognition, we were making some adjustments, but it was used in another project, and we quickly could see where it was used, and okay, it was used in another project, we needed to up-revise it, and Solid Edge for SharePoint just looked after us with that nice little hyperlink. And what about it being design management, not just product data management? You know, we, we talk about product data management, everyone falls asleep. Design management, do you remember that nice visual approach that we, uh, we took a look at? So when we were working on the little engine uh, assembly, we, just, we had our to-do list, our stuff in the ECO, and that nice visual approach where everything sort of blew out, we could see exactly what we needed to do, could see the thumbnail of the command, and we accessed that all from an email right up front. I mean, that's true collaboration right there. Hyperlink took us into this. So if you're thinking, actually, I, I kind of like this, this stuff. It doesn't seem that scary. Please come and talk to us about it. In the booth downstairs, a level below, uh, go to the design management booth. We'd be happy to show you the, the ins and outs of, of Solid Edge for SharePoint. As well as on Thursday, there's a full day session uh, on design management, in particular Solid Edge for SharePoint. And so there's still time to sign up for that. If you'd like to sign up for that session, we recommend you do so. Uh, it's great to see, of course, customers adopting these technologies. Thebotech down in South Africa, they make uh, grain harvesting equipment, threshers, those kind of things. And what they really like about it, and what we really like about it, is it's visual and straightforward. They can see the relationships between their parts. And if I change this, what else is going to happen? Now, we've been talking a lot about CAD productivity, and that's good. That's a lot of what we're about. Uh, but what about all the rest of the stuff that surrounds CAD, collaboration, manufacturing, and so on? And so we want to take a look now at how we can help you power up with new apps. And let's start with Solid Edge Simulation. It's really not a new app, but I would encourage all of you to look at it more closely. You can save money with Solid Edge Simulation. If you can cut your prototypes from three or four down to one or two, that is big money in your pocket. So I encourage you to look deeply at Solid Edge Simulation. What about standard and catalog parts and access to those? Hopefully you're aware of Solid Edge Part Community. So this is uh, it's a website you're used to it being. It's powered by Cadenas. So you get access to, to tons of, uh, of off-the-shelf components. This is now available all in your pocket. So iOS devices, Android devices, there's an app that's now downloadable. So you can browse for over 400 manufacturers while you're on the go. What about electrical? So we partner with several different companies for electrical schematics and then doing the wiring, but we're working very closely with Zookin right now. Their product E3 is a great product for schematics. You can do your schematics and figure out all that electrical engineering stuff that I don't understand. And you can transfer that into Solid Edge to do the wiring automatically, connect everything up automatically, and then use your wire routing techniques to put it in place. You can then finish it out with nail boards in Solid Edge to create the manufacturing drawings for the harness. And you can take those wire links back to Zookin for further analysis there, for example, voltage drop and such that happens based on the wire links. So a full, complete cycle. Now, not only are people building new apps on Solid Edge, they're also building new work practice on Solid Edge. So we've talked a lot about synchronous technology today, but those of you who are history-based users, I want you to perk up your ears for just a second and take down this particular website, learnrms.com. Some great work practice on how to build resilient solid models, solid models that you can edit without causing the whole tree to go red and everything break. How can you put together your design process better to do this? So write down learnrms.com. 
if you go over there, you're probably thinking, oh, I gotta go through days or weeks of stuff. It's really about an hour in little two to four minute snippets. You can learn how to do this and immediately be more productive. Okay, next up, 3D printing. So I'm sure you've all heard about 3D printing. It's always big in the CAD press. It's also something maybe you think it's reserved for larger companies, machines costing tens of thousands of dollars. That's, that's really no longer the case with machines like the, uh, the MakerBot replicator that's in the picture there. And also nice intuitive um, interfaces to prep models for those more uh, consumer level, or more accessible uh, machines, such as Microsoft 3D Builder. So in Solid Edge ST7, we now have a direct link with 3D Builder, so it really gives you great access to 3D printing. And then finally, what about CAM? We, of course, have the CAM Express product for doing a variety of complicated machining operations. We also have CAM Works that works directly in the Solid Edge window. And that product has been evolving as well, and we'll hear more about that in later sessions today. Uh, but adding more machining capabilities, as well as, of course, assembly level machining and being able to see whether you have problems or clearances or that kind of thing. Da I'm sorry, Dan, yep. I'm going to have to interrupt you here. So. Uh, this, this guy. We, you've been, you know, we've been presenting what's new in ST7. We've, yeah. we've put, sorry about this. I've got to pull this guy out. He's just messing around on his tablet. Excuse me. What are you doing? Me. me. Yeah, everyone, everyone here is paying attention. We've put some effort here. We're, we're presenting all of this new stuff in ST7. You're just messing around on your tablet. I'm just, I'm just trying to get some side work done, man. You're trying to get some side work done while yeah. we're, we're all here. Unbelievable. Well, it, it's not just any side work. I mean, I, I had my partner, I'm on travel right now, of course. I had my partner finish up some, some design work, and I'm just putting it in the assembly, making sure it works. I've got to be at the links in an hour. Oh, so you're working on Solid Edge? Yeah, well, I mean, you're, you're the one up there giving the presentation for new ST7 stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 if you want me to spill the beans, I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah, with the, the Microsoft Surface Pro, uh, you have full access to Solid Edge and all the functionality in it. And, you know, using GrabCAD's workbench, you know, you can collaborate and send files over. All right, all right, yeah. big mouth. Come on, then. Come up and show us it. Man, I tell you what, these Englishmen are catty, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Mark. Would you mind just this, this guy? We'll give him the opportunity, but, you know. Oh, sorry. We'll get cracking. Yeah, okay. Get cracking. Get cracking. You don't mind if I shut that, do you? Mike, show me what this is all about. All right, so, well, well, basically what we have here is, uh, you know, we've been, we've been working on a design to, uh, to finish off this golf cart, right? Okay. So, um, using GrabCAD, like I said, my, my partner just had some updates come through. Go and access Workbench, go and collaborate online, uh, take a look at, at all the different stuff that we have, you know, using our own folder structures. We can look at it in the viewer. Solid Edge ST7 is going to be uh, integrated. The viewer is going to be able to support all of the different models. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, you can download all of those files directly onto your system. OK. So you know, this is all, this is the GrabCAD workbench. We have heard about this. So online collaboration. So over, over the Wi Fi's, you can download the model. You can make sure it's the most up to date one. And, and that all integrates then just within Solid Edge. You just bring in that model that's, that's downloaded onto your tablet. I mean, it's all sounding very, it's all sounding very cool. And then you're snapping this into position. I noticed you were using like your fingers. It seems to support finger gestures. You can zoom in and out using your fingers, but one's fingers tend to be a little bit fat, should we say? So I see you're uh, you're using a stylus as well. That's that's pretty cool for the detailed work. Yeah. Well, I mean. To be able to zoom around and stuff, I'm not going to be able to carry my, my 3D mouse around and it gets kind of touchy, especially if you don't have a mouse. So yeah. I usually on travel just use the stylus and, uh, and you know, when I'm at my desktop, I'll, I'll use a mouse or whatnot. Okay. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about this bad boy right here. We're going to make a lot of money using this. Okay. I mean, yeah, awesome, awesome use of the tools here. So Microsoft Surface Pro running full solid edge, finger gestures. Yeah, and man, got collaboration on the go. GrabCAD Workbench for collaboration. It, I mean, it sounds awesome. Love it. These already exist, these products. You know that. Well, I mean, yeah. But we have a secret weapon, though. Which is? Yeah, we're actually going to have uh, Tiger Woods is going to sponsor us on this one. Tiger so. Woods is going to? How have you yeah, managed we're that? Yeah, we're going to have his name on it. Well, I mean, I'm kind of a big deal around the links. You know, I, I, 
Okay. I, I do quite a bit of golfing in my time. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, this, this is, uh, well, this is actually a picture of me and Paula Kramer when she won the Open uh, relatively recently. But uh, yeah, I'm actually going to have Paula propose, uh, propose the idea to him at the uh, first tee beer card a little bit later. It, look, it looks like a photoshopped image. No, no, absolutely not. That, was, uh, that actually happened. And, uh, and yeah, she's, she's, she's backstage. Yeah, she's actually waiting. That's why we got to get going. She's actually waiting I can, for me. I can help her. I mean, I love tennis. I mean, let's go. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure about that. Let me do the talking. I've seen you present. <laughs> All right. Thanks, you guys. All right, so great fun, but what did you actually see there? You saw a GrabCAD workbench. So GrabCAD, a lot of you may know, is a place where you can get you know, models, uh, millions of models for free for different purposes. But also they have workbench where you can collaborate with other users. You can upload your solid edge models. They're automatically transferred into a viewing format where you can collaborate with others. They're automatically synced with solid edge. And you then, of course, do have an access to thousands of solid edge models in the public library as well. So that's pretty awesome stuff. One thing we didn't show but also very excited about is collaboration with Canesto. So Canesto's here at the show as well. And Canesto is, also does cloud-based collaboration where you can get your model up there, view and market up with your suppliers or customers. And additionally, they provide a lot of workflow tools. So you can design workflows to get customer sign-off or supplier sign-off. So some very exciting technology. Definitely see that in the, uh, in the sessions. I think they're one floor down from here. And then, most importantly, the Microsoft Surface Pro. I call this a workstation in your hand. It's quite amazing. Runs Solid Edge very well. Plug in a monitor and keyboard and just rock and roll with Solid Edge. Uh, or you can take it with you on the go. And in fact, as you go to the hands-on rooms down below, one of the hands-on rooms that you're going to be doing in Solid Edge, you know, straight up production work, is purely Microsoft Surface Pros. So very exciting new development here with our partner, Microsoft. OK, so let's just wrap things here, bring things to a close. So what did you see? Accelerating your 3D modeling, fast, flexible 3D modeling, and beautiful photorealistic rendering from Keyshot that allows you to be more productive and design better. Streamline your design management. We were doing design management that whole time. First time, I think, probably ever been done, where it was a CAD demo and design management was happening. And we weren't saying it was design management, but it was happening live here on Solid Edge for SharePoint. That's how easy it is to use. Power up with new apps, whether those are for manufacturing, collaboration, electrical design work, whatever it may be. And really wrap that all up in an amazing user experience. Completely revamp from top to bottom, whether it's holes or measure, or just your user interaction with sketching. I think you're going to really enjoy working in Solid Edge ST7. And finally, of course, this is about you. We work on features. It is fun. But we work on features because of you, the features that you would like to have to be more productive in your day-to-day -day work. So I encourage you to particularly take advantage of this gathering. You have the opportunity to go to all sorts of different sessions. If you brought multiple people from your, different, uh, from your company, make sure you're spreading the love out in the different sessions, learning many things. Talk to your other uh, users on break who might be in a like industry. Figure out how to use Solid Edge better. And then go forth and do what you do best, which is design great products. Thanks so much.